I think you've pissed off Windows 10 so much, it's going to crash during think, the recording. You think I've angered Windows? Yes. You think I've angered Windows with my shenanigans, like giving it a one-star feedback? It was two stars, to be honest. It was two stars. I was like, why are you sending me notifications? What is with all these notifications? Please just don't send me notifications for things I don't care about. It's like when you're using an app and it pops up and goes, hey, what would you rate us on the App Store? And I'm like, I wasn't going to rate you anything, but now I'm going to rate you one star. I mean, I don't because that would be mean, but I really want to. Sorry, I, I shouldn't go off on this one about rating people because, you know, we want we want you to be rated, right? We want to be rated five stars, please. <laughs> but, you know, we're not in your face about it. You know, I've never gone and said, hey, like and subscribe. Or have, <laughs> or have I? Have I done that? Well, I've done it for you. You've done it. Okay. Well... You know, that's teeing for you. He's always trying to, he's, he's always trying to ingratiate himself. I'm the one with all the good karma, so I'm the one who has to ask. <laughs> like me. I like me, this like grumpy, angry so and so. We should get on with it. So, you survived Super Typhoon Mankut. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? I thought I thought you'd help me out. That's why I said nothing in the preamble. T10 Typhoon. Hurricane. Oh, there's so much like weird terminology floating around that everyone's disagreeing with. There's a lot of very Hong Kong specific terminology. It's not even T10. You know, and what's really funny is that everyone says it's T10. It's Signal 10, right? Because the warning there's a typhoon in the area symbol... They say, okay, signal one is raised, or signal like T1 is raised, and it's like a letter T and then a one. Yes. But isn't signal three like an upside down T? Okay. And then if it gets to signal eight, it's just arrows indicating which way the wind goes, and then eight. And then ten is just a ten, I think? I thought, I thought it was a T10. Is it? Maybe you're right. I'm going to call it quickly. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm like... <laughs> Oh no, so signal 10 is actually a plus. Huh? It's a plus 10. And look, I mean, number 3 is an upside down T. What does that mean? Okay, thanks. You've told me it's an upside down T. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a symbol. It's just a symbol. It's not even a T10. It's not even a T10. It's a plus 10. It's just a signal 10. They just have 10 levels of severity for typhoons. Of which ten is the most severe, and it's local to Hong Kong. It's just scale. a Hong Kong. It's just a Hong Kong thing. I mean, I think it was like a Category Five storm or something in American terms, right? I mean, it was it was serious business. If it had hit dead on, it would have been the strongest typhoon to have ever hit Hong Kong in recorded history. But it didn't hit Hong Kong. It kind of just bounced off the shield, right? The shield is itself a weird piece of like local Hong Kong. This is news to me. Really? There's, there's this whole thing about how Li Keqing doesn't oh, yeah. want his his productivity impacted, and so the typhoon just bounces off his shield of money, or whatever the hell it is. Or it just comes or, on a weekend. Or it comes... Well, and it came on a weekend this time, didn't it? But even though we were only dealt a glancing blow, it still completely totaled Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, it did. Like, it was it was serious business. Like, we have typhoons every now and then, it usually only goes as high as eight. In the seven years I have lived in Hong Kong, this is the third Signal 10 I have seen, but by far this was the most severe. Literally, what happened? I don't know, like flooding, cranes blowing over, some building, like it just like blew off like a good chunk of the front of the building and like all these papers were just blowing out the building. Like it was completely wrecked, right? Windows were broken, trees were felled. Do you have hanging lights? Yes. Did they swing a little bit? What Were the lights swinging or was the building swinging? Because the first time I was in a major typhoon in Hong Kong, I was like, how is the wind getting into my building? Like, how, you know, is there air leaking in through like a crack somewhere and it's making the light swing? I was like, I can't feel a draft. And then what I realized was the lights are actually still and the building is moving. I thought you were a smart person. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm not that kind of engineer. Yeah, it took me a while to realize that was what was happening. 
and there's cool crazy like video of someone looking out their window and seeing the building next to them swaying like significantly swaying so yeah that happened i've been asked to avoid all trees this week because they do just fall over on the next day on the monday there was a photo going round of a guy you know just like a tree literally just fell on him it's a serious matter yeah it's a serious matter i mean the thing is usually if there's a typhoon on the weekend you just go to work as normal on monday but we all got a message saying don't come into work work remotely basically and then they actually said if you can't log in remotely because of capacity issues just don't come in anyway oh really yeah they just said just stay at home they said it's too dangerous to go out still so what did you do uh <laughs> i just i just couldn't log in so i just like uh did productive things <laughs> surely you you were excused from doing productive things well i i still technically had my email and stuff right i oh, so was just checking your email on the toilet <laughs> on the toilet what? No, why, why does it have to be on the toilet because <laughs> you don't give me anything else it's to prompt you to say something better I actually did a training course I actually had some like training on this data analysis thingy I had to do so I did it sorry very boring I, I mean I'm sure you were expecting me to say I was playing PUBG or something but no yeah I, I was trying to I ran around naked in my flat uh, you don't have to have a typhoon day for that true in my typhoon pants. In my typhoon, typhoon day pants. In my typhoon day pants. Yeah, that's right. Should we move on? Okay, fine. Let's move on. <laughs> you're, you're like, boring. Let's move on. Fine, let's move I on. I don't have a third topic, though. You don't have a third topic? No. You had a whole list. You had this, like, massive list oh, okay. of... Okay, the, fun, the, the funnest one I had was ultramarathons are the in thing for the middle age now. Who's doing these ultramarathons? The middle-aged? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. How long are they taking to do them? What training do you have to do to do an ultramarathon? A lot. But they're doing I, I very don't, well. I don't know it's anyone not, doing an ultramarathon. Because you're not middle-aged yet. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you don't feel like you're getting old yet. You'd have to prove your youth to anyone. That's why you do it. Cool story, bro. Okay, get go on. Give me some facts. I thought you were going to throw it back to me. I thought you'd just like dismiss it. It's ir- <laughs> I already did. I was like, who's doing these ultramarathons? I don't know anyone doing this ultramarathon. So when are you going to start? <laughs> Thanks, Tink. <laughs> I can tell you I'm doing the Spartan race. Did you know that? No. I never thought I'd see the day, but I'm doing the Spartan race. I guess I was peer pressured into it, right? Obviously. Is Spartan like a global phenomenon? Is it just a Hong Kong thing? I have no idea what this is yet. So in Central, you see like buff shirtless guys dressed up like in, you know, greek fancy dress right like no this is your central not my central <laughs> like by the mtr exit and they're carrying spears and wearing helmets and shields and like sandals i don't know they're dressed up like spartans right no and but... they're advertising the spartan race to be honest i only saw this once i mean you mostly just see adverts on the mtr saying like spartan race sign up and like self-actualization or something it's just some stupid race where you have to run through mud and do obstacles. Half naked? No, you can wear whatever you like. Oh, not spears and half naked. Not spears and half naked. <laughs> well, this is one of the obstacles, I think, is throwing a javelin. Apparently, it's very hard. Like, people go, oh, yeah, most of the obstacles are really easy, apart from throwing the javelin. I'm like, what? It's like, oh, and the Atlas Stone. And it's like, the what? So, yeah, some new guy started a couple of months ago, and he is, like, built like a brick shit house is that the appropriate phrase he's like this massive burly dude when he walked in the office people just couldn't believe it i think someone said he's like he's like the chinese hulk he actually looks like he could just be like hulk smash and like punch through a wall and he was like oh we should all do spartan race together it'll be it'll be great fun i did it with my old team and like no one felt they could say no <laughs> can't say no to the hulk <laughs> we can't say no to the hulk when the hulk challenges you to a spartan race you have to do it so uh now, like, half the company has signed up for the Spartan race, <laughs> including me. That's going to be fun. When is this? It's in November. How long is the race? Or how, long, how big is the obstacle course? How long will you take? We're only doing the... The baby one. The baby one. So it's like a 5k run with obstacles. 
It's like something like 5k in 15 obstacles. Still a good effort. I'm not going to judge it. I don't know. I was completely blasé about it for ages. Like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. And as the date is approaching, and as I hear about more and more of these obstacles, I'm actually starting to think, do I have to do some training for this? I'm actually kind of worried. And everyone keeps, everyone else keeps telling me about their training regimes. They're like, oh yeah, I went for a run the other day. Oh yeah, I've been going to the gym. I've been doing 100 push-ups a day. And I'm just thinking, I'm doing I 200 ate, a day. It's fine. <laughs> I ate a cake. I ate a cake, and I I ate like two peanut butter crunch ice creams you go to the gym at seven in the morning what are you talking about you're fine <laughs> you don't know what i do at the gym i go to the gym i just complain to the pt so <laughs> long enough that i don't have to do any exercise oh i know that game i do that as well so i'll let you know how i did in november please i'm just hoping you forget now when it's a fiasco <laughs> oh I was sick that day. I couldn't do it. <laughs> now you've told me there are adverts and everything. Have you not seen them? Not once. I'll look out for them. There might not be any more because it was a while back. Like the sign-ups. Actually, I say that. There's probably still time if you're interested. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I thought you were send the Hulk over. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Welcome to Lost Levels Club. Welcome to Lost Levels Club. Have with me tonight, Sir Michael. Hello. And myself. Timothy. We're a book club for games. But not today. Today, we're going to talk about... The five-year-old slash r slash games Reddit time capsule. The PS1 classic. Switch Online and the recent Nintendo Direct. Call of Duty Blackout. And rapid fire. <laughs> Even though Tim really doesn't want to. That's, that's commitment there now. We're doing it. So what is the Reddit games time capsule? I actually don't know the name of the post or the, the post itself. I just know the, the result of that post. Five years ago, some Reddit user posted, if r slash games had a time capsule to be opened in five years, what thoughts, predictions, expectations would you have on the future of gaming? And it has now been five years since that post. Has that guy been sitting on that post for five years? Like, it's going to be my big moment in four years and two months time. And then like, boop, 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 boop. And then he's like, I'm going to repost this one. No, he didn't. Because I keep saying he, I have no idea if it's a he or she, but okay, like probability wise, it is a he. They did not post the follow-up. The person who posted, they, hey, it's been five years since the time capsule. Let's see what we got right and wrong. That was a different user. And breaking out the iPad to check who posted it. So the user Coco Bandicoot posted the original time capsule and got 92 karma from it. You have to explain to me what this karma means because it's important to you. I can tell. Well, Potato Slayer 2 posted the follow-up and got 8k karma which is clearly too much karma from your face <laughs> it's karma fr from your face <laughs> karma from your face. too much karma karma's just like blasting out my face i just like turn around <laughs> the, the radiant majesty of my face just bathes karma down upon you i mean it does do that we don't usually talk about it do you use reddit Yes. You just look at it, you don't have an account. I have an account. You have an account? Yes. You don't know what karma is? Nope. You're not, you're, you're just interneting wrong. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No one cares about karma. No one cares about karma, except that it's really important. I mean, it doesn't actually get you anything, but at the same time, it's just, it's just, it is literally the embodiment of magical internet points, like mythical, just, it's literally just keeping score for the sake of keeping score. If you make a post on Reddit, or if you make a comment on Reddit, people can up and down vote it. Yes. When they upvote it, you get one karma. And if they downvote it, you lose one karma. What about gold? Gold is something different. Gold is when you want to give Reddit money, because they need money somehow, I guess. But I can give you gold, though. You could give me gold, but you'd have to buy the gold from Reddit first. Okay. Gold costs real money. Karma is free. But an individual user can only up or down vote a post once. So if this post has got 8k karma, that means like 8,000 people at least upvoted it. 
maybe more, and some people downvoted it. And there's all sorts of stuff about manipulating up and down votes and the brigading and bleh, like this is the this is the Reddit rabbit hole. Like, just don't go there. I don't have very much karma, I can tell you, but I don't post very much. I mostly lurk. <laughs> what? Pro- proper tangent club. Proper tangent club is just this is on topic. It's Reddit. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Back to the time capsule. It was surprisingly accurate. Many people may... Well, actually, maybe there was just loads of wrong stuff in there too, but the things that got upvoted were actually quite surprisingly accurate. I don't think we need to read out verbatim some of the posts, but we've each picked out some posts that just illustrate how surprisingly on point people were. Nintendo to consolidate its two platforms into one? And that one platform being a handheld device. Yeah, a very common theme was people saying PS4 is going to be in the lead. Xbox One will be behind, but not like catastrophically behind. The Wii U will be nowhere. And Nintendo will decide to focus on its handhelds. And maybe we'll see a successor to the 3DS. And that's kind of the Switch. Maybe. I'm not so sure you can say that, but you can say that. I'll let this slide. <laughs> Maybe. What? Okay, fine. la da sorry. Well, I think I can say that. Obviously, I think like, I just said it. Another one was the um, the change in physical media versus digital download. So, physical media won't be gone completely, but it will mostly just be a good chunk of installer. And then the rest of the game will just come down from the internet anyway. That that second point is really on point. It's, I mean, it's literally what happens now, right? Yeah. In the PC games space, in the AAA space, that's literally what it is. Like, you can't actually buy, like, a AAA game on disc anymore on PC, basically. Like, even if you can buy a physical copy, it will just be a download code, or it will just be a pre-canned like installer blob but the actual game will just come down from the internet and build upon that like 50 gigabyte chunk that was on disk if you have no internet connection you are stuck well just play console games right or indie games but yeah really think about it like what triple a game comes just on disk these days maybe it's the witcher 3 the witcher 3 once again is like the savior or something right i mean like it's a CD Projekt Red game. They're the good old games guys, right? Yeah. And they famously have no DRM. Yeah. So perhaps that one literally does come on disc still. Because there's no weird internet wibbly wobbliness to commune with. Mm, that's true. Talking of GOG, one prediction was that there will be other PC online shops besides Steam. And that Steam will be losing its monopoly. Yeah. Is that true? No, it's not true. No, I mean, there are other online stores, but Steam is still undisputedly number one by a tremendous margin. This one made me smile for the other reason. It was just, you can't bet against Steam. You can't bet against Steam? You can't. Always bet on the house. It is funny how Steam has just become... The one, like, I remember, it must be shockingly long ago now, but I remember Steam when it first came out, and me just being incensed that I had to install this bloatware to play Half-Life 2, and then being annoyed that it wanted to start up automatically with my PC. Like, I don't want to play Half-Life 2 every time I turn on my PC, why would I want to launch this thing every time I start my PC? And to this day, I don't have Steam auto-starting. That's like the first thing I disable. Seriously? Yeah. I really thought I had you down as someone who would auto start Steam. No. So I turn on my PC, I sit down and I click on the Steam icon because I always want Steam when I start my PC. (laughs) It's not quite that bad, but it's practically that bad. Yeah, Steam. Just, it is PC gaming right now, pretty much. Did you have any more? Uh, I've got a couple more. Okay, to quote literally from one then. Some unknown developer will make a smaller, great, well-written, heartfelt game that nobody will buy. 
I mean, I'm calling this one Undertale, except that everybody bought Undertale. There's probably actually a whole bunch of other ones that are like Undertale that nobody bought. Like, isn't that like one shot? Like, the fact that you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about means that I'm probably right about that. I bought one shot, I just haven't played it. But Undertale... Undertale is so beautiful. I still read the fan fiction. It's terrible. The, I was fan, trying, the fan fiction is terrible, or <laughs> no? It's just no. It's terrible that I'm just still reading all this Undertale fan fiction, but I liked it that much. I was trying to explain to you, it's like, oh, and this one, this one has this twist on the plot, and it's so good. And you were just like, wow, you need to get out more. I did not think that. That's not fair. <laughs> no, I'm just putting words in your mouth. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So you, you don't mind me with my Asriel Chara slash fan fiction? No, I wasn't bored by it. And then the last one I had, the emerging survival genre will be in full swing. There will be dozens of survival games similar to DayZ. Wow, I said DayZ instead of DayZ. I've been gone too long. How do you say the letter after G? H. People who say H are just wrong. I'm just wrong. (laughs) Do you say H? I do. April's like, what? H. I mean, I guess usually. Sorry, this is this is tangent club now. Okay, we're just gonna go on this little tangent and come back. I guess usually the letter is pronounced with the sound of that letter at the start. I guess like A and then B, 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 like C, like it's a soft C. D, like D, E, yeah. So I guess to say H would be consistent with that. If you're five years old. I suppose L is not a L. You don't say L. <laughs> That's what we've been getting wrong all this time. H I J K L Men <laughs> Nen. <laughs> see see what you've done? This is why it's H. I never got down to L. <laughs> there, there you go. That's what you see. If you actually learned your alphabet, you would know why it's A. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pulling it back. Pulling it back. I think there were dozens of survival games. In fact, maybe there still are dozens of survival games that never really left early access. But it hasn't made it to five years, right? Now it's all about Battle Royale. Yes. I guess it was kind of right, though. Like, everyone did go mad for survival games. Like, everyone was trying to make one for a while. Just, like, none of them were really successful in the end. I mean, apart from a couple of... Well, Minecraft, obviously, incredibly successful. Daisy was kind of moderately successful, I guess. Ark is pretty successful. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I haven't seen the sales numbers. Whatever. Anyway, that's all I had to say about that. PS1 Classic? PS1 Classic. Launching... December 3rd. And costing 99 USD. 20 preloaded games. Including? Well, the only ones that have been announced as of the time we're recording... Final Fantasy VII, Tekken 3... Wild Arms, Ridge Racer... And Jumping Flash... Shockingly, no analog controllers, so they're the OG PlayStation without thumbsticks controllers. The PS1 did have an analog controller. Not at launch. But it, it did at during its life. Yeah, at, during its life it got the dual shock. I think during its life it originally had the analog controller, and then dual shock was a later revision of that that had rumble as well. So it actually had three versions of the controller, I think. And now we're on DualShock 4. Yeah, DualShock is the one that's persisted, right? It's the one that stood the test of time. I mean, if you look at, like, basically all modern controllers now, they are basically variations on the DualShock. Even Nintendo has finally capitulated and followed the same design. They've given up with their wacky different button layouts and just converged. So, let's begin to speculate. Speculate wildly what the other games are. Yeah. Wait, wait, you never had a PS1? No. So you 
have no real opinion on what was good or bad. I mean, you must have played some PS1 games. Yeah, I did. Uh, I may have played some remasters as well of PS1 games. I'm trying to think what the really good games would be, but then I think there are all sorts of problems with re-releasing stuff, right? Because you've got like... Do you remember there was this massive trend at the time for kind of extreme sports games? I say extreme sports. I mean, like, basically snowboarding and skateboarding. I mean, basically games where you stand on a plank. <laughs> Sorry. So dismissive. <laughs> so dismissive. I'm, I'm trying very hard today. I'm trying very hard to be, today to be extra dismissive of everything. <laughs> I'm not really. I just drank too much coffee. Go on. No, uh, that, that was all I had to say. Like, was it Cool Borders or Cool Borders 2? And then Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and all of those games. Like, they were, like, the business back in the day, right? Everyone was obsessed with them. I mean, they were good. I mean, even I enjoyed playing them, and I don't really, like... Did you play Tony Hawk? Yeah. I didn't own it, to be fair, though. I didn't own it. But, you know, I had a friend who had it, and we'd play it. I was all about the RPGs. So beyond, obviously, Final Fantasy VII, I really liked Final Fantasy VIII. No one else seems to like Final Fantasy VIII. I mean, there'll probably be more about that later, but I'm sad Final Fantasy VIII doesn't get more love. Final Fantasy Tactics, I'd like to see Final Fantasy Tactics on there. I think, to this day, it's one of my favourite games ever. Again, on the RPG front, Vagrant Story. <laughs> Sorry, this is all just like... Final... I think Vagrant Story is actually set in the same universe as Final Fantasy Tactics. I never actually played it. I just wanted to play it, but I just never got around to actually playing it. So I'd also like a reason slash way to play it. Dragon Quest? I never played any of the Dragon Quest games. I surprisingly have still, to this day, never played a Dragon Quest game. What are we on now? 11? I think so. Is it on the Switch? Or is it on PS4? Okay, who knows? Anyway, I know 11 just came out recently and everyone was going on about it. I've never played them. There's probably some alternate universe where instead of playing Final Fantasy, I played Dragon Quest instead and never played any of the Final Fantasy games. And I just be like, oh, you Philistines. Final Fantasy is so mainstream. Dragon Quest is the true connoisseur's RPG. You're more obnoxious in the other world, are you? <laughs> is such a thing possible? <laughs> I put down a game which I thought was like the essential PS1 experience. Wipeout. But you've not played this. I have played it on a demo station in a shop. Was this a launch game for the PS1? I don't know. It was like so. It was just like the one. Was it? Was this the game you played in clubs? It was everywhere for a little while, right? Did it like epitomise what they were going for with the PlayStation One? Like it was like the N64 had like Mario and it was cutesy and kind of kiddy, and like the PS1 was like edgy and techno and just like pounding music and just like on drugs or something <laughs> yes i just don't really like racing games in general right well actually i say i don't like it's not like i actively dislike them i just don't particularly care for them like i i'm not a massive like racing game fan well, apart from like mario kart i guess you know but i don't know they just don't do much for me so yeah i i don't have much to say about it you went into that kind of music Oh, I quite like the music. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. You know, talking of racing games, obviously, Gran Turismo. They should have that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two. One and two. Yeah. Gran Turismo was, like, the game. But, man, that thing's blurry as hell. <laughs> All these games are going to be blurry as hell. It's funny, as we talk about it more, I'm just, like, thinking of more and more PS1 games, like Tenchu, Stealth Assassins. That was another good one. You're right, though. Seriously, the blowiness. Going to go down a nerd rabbit hole briefly. Like, the problem with the PS1 is, I think it, it's something completely crazy. Like, as a technical person, right? I think it can't do floating point maths properly. Like, I think it only does, like, integer maths. or It's something insane like that. Like, I'm sure it can do floating point maths, but, like, there's something wrong with, like, the hardware texturing. And that's why, you know, when you're playing a Actually, you wouldn't know because you didn't have a PS1. Like, one of the things you notice when you're playing a PS1 game is that the text just kind of like swim around and go wibbly wobbly. And I think it's because it's doing the texturing using integer math. And as a result, like, things are kind of like 
flipping from like one digit to the next and thus they kind of just don't stay in the same place. It's something ridiculous like that. There was a really interesting, if you're a mega nerd, article about this problem and how in an emulator they managed to actually fix it. It's pretty cool. So a lot of these PS1 games have been remade. I mean, did you play um, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes? No. Fine. (laughs) There are actually, along with Dragon Quest, many other gaps in my actual like gaming experience so i have played metal gear solid one but not finished it because i borrowed it from a friend i've never played tomb raider any of them any of them i think i may have played a tiny bit of tomb raider 2 but i literally like played like 10 or 20 minutes of it so you know so tomb raider's been remade and re-released and also resident evil yeah, I mean, these were some of the really big games. And, and I think this is going to be the problem with, you know, this PS1 classic. Because if you think the NES classic, the SNES classic, those games haven't been remade. And they were also kind of at the, well, I mean, maybe this is a stretch to say it for the NES, but like, you know, like the pinnacle of like 2D gaming, right? Like 2D sprite graphics didn't get that much better. For the games they were making, those graphics were perfectly functional. But, you know, as we just mentioned, the PS1 blurry swimming textures, horrible mess, right? The problem with the early 3D era, which includes the N64, everything looked just terrible. But the games were really good, right? Like, like they played really well. They were really well designed. They were really fun. And, when people have gone back to those old games, they've realised, wow, this this is awful. How did I play this? And so they've been remade. So we've had Resident Evil has been remade. Resident Evil 2 is being remade and looks incredible. Tomb Raider, remade. Metal Gear Solid, remade. So I do think maybe this is going to be the struggle for the PS1 classic. Even Crash and Spyro. Remade, yeah. Sounds like we're not buying PS1 classics for Christmas. Well, I'm sure they're going to be sold out and then sold on the secondary market at vastly inflated prices by scalpers anyway. Either that or it's a convenient Christmas present. (laughs) I think um, there was like an Xbox tweet saying, you can play all these games already as part of our backwards compatibility program. Psych. That's how it should be. Well, speaking of backwards compatibility programs... Switch Online, and the Nintendo Direct. Oh, there were many, many announcements. Yeah, we're not going to go through all of them, right? We're just going to talk about the ones that we liked? Or we thought were fun. Animal Crossing is coming to Switch. But you've not played Animal Crossing. Nor have I, by the way, but I thought you would have. Yeah, I've never played Animal Crossing. I, I don't even really quite understand what it is. Is it kind of like... Harvest Moon slash Stardew Valley slash that sort of thing, but it's not really, right? It's it's more just... Animals Crossing. Enjoy living in this virtual village and the sense of community. Right? Don't know. Don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. It's the sort of game I've often thought about playing. Like, I thought about buying it on the 3DS... But I I just never did. I mean, maybe the Switch version is time to jump in. I don't know. Although I've already got a terrible backlog on Switch. Somehow I have a game's backlog on Switch already. You have Golf Story still. I I still have Golf Story. I still have Golf Story. I keep meaning to play that. Anyway, the more important Animal Crossing announcement was that Isabel. Isabel is in Smash! So now I'm going to buy Smash Brothers just so I can play as Isabel. Just, <laughs> so, you, just so you can fight a stranger over being Isabel. Yeah, that's Smash. right. It's like, no, I'm going to be... You can all pick the same character in Smash. 
you can all be the same character. You won't allow it, though. I won't allow it. I'll be like, nope, I am Isabel. You know, it's funny that this has just become my thing, right? In Mario Kart now, I always race as Isabel. I have no idea why. I've never even played Animal Crossing. I just thought, I just thought Isabel was a cute character. What does your life come to? What has my? I know. Seriously, what has happened to me? Something has gone very wrong somewhere. I'm reading Undertale fan fiction, and I'm playing as a small dog in Mario Kart. You're enjoying life. <laughs> Am I? Am I? Yes. We're refusing to grow up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> It's true, though. No, it's a good thing. Did you get a GameCube? I never owned a GameCube. My sister had a GameCube. You're very, you're very clear on that. It's like it's always my sister's GameCube. It's like I can't associate directly with the GameCube. No, no, no. It's, it's an inferior <laughs> platform. It's not that at all. I would have been very happy with the GameCube, but I'm just saying the GameCube belonged to my sister. I don't want to steal her GameCube because. At the time the GameCube came out, that was when I was at university. So I had this import American PS2, which was this massive pain in the butt. And as a result, I mean, as I've said in the past, I actually played very few computer games at university. Part of it was because I had a PS2 I just couldn't buy any games for because it was US and thanks a lot region locking. And then, yeah, it was university, so whatever. But while I was at university, my youngest sister bought a GameCube, and I played it a bit during the holidays. Did you play Luigi's Mansion? No. What the hell? This is the third one. Yeah. What was the... Was it, wasn't it like Dark Moon or something was the second one? On the 3DS. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't play Luigi's Mansion games. <laughs> They're quite good, aren't they? By all accounts. Only have, if you have no other games to play. <laughs> Only if there's no Mario game available. <laughs> there were no other games to play. So it was good, yeah. Maybe they'll make it better. I, I thought they were quite good. I mean, I say that. I've never played it. I've literally never played Luigi's Mansion. Are you fussed about Smash Ultimate? I can't believe how crazy Smash Ultimate is getting. I mean, not only has it got Isabel, it's got literally everyone, right? You're not in it. <laughs> We need this podcast to go, like, super ultra-mega-viral, and then I can be in it, right? It's the other way around. We need to be in Smash to go ultra-mega-viral. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, prepare the bribe. No, uh... Just call in the favour now. Call in the favour now. Hey, Shiggy, Shiggy, you know those photos? Maybe if we make a ludicrously popular game, our character can be in it? Indie game... Then it's going to be published by Nintendo. We'll go do it that way. Do they have the Snipper Clips characters in? No, they don't. I mean, this is a missed the, opportunity. That's the next announcement. That's the next. <laughs> I'm really shocked by just because you know when they first announced it, right? Well, actually, no. They announced it originally with the Inkling video, didn't they? With the and the big Smash symbol like reflected in its eye. But the first proper Smash announcement, and they, you know, they said, "Well, who's in it?" everyone everyone who's ever been in smash is in it and then they're still just announcing new characters too so it's not just like mario kart deluxe was where it's all of the mario kart 8 stuff plus the dlc but it's like it's everyone who's ever been in smash plus blah 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 just, they just keep announcing more madness how many more do you think there'll be? Go, go on, like, name some improbable characters. Well, I mean, there's the Snipperclips ones. Waluigi. Waluigi, <laughs> Waluigi's an assist trophy. He's never, he's never going to be playable. He's got to be. He's got to be. That, that would be some next level so much tomfoolery. Mo- there's so much momentum now. He's got to be in. That would be amazing. Just, actually, I mean, obviously, they don't care about this in Japan, but Waluigi's just such a stupid name. It just doesn't work. I, I know it works in Japanese. It doesn't work at all in English, right? Why not? Because, <laughs> because putting wa on front of putting wa in front of something just sounds stupid in English. In Japanese, like wa means like bad or evil, right? So like Wario is like next level punnery, and like Waluigi is like bad Luigi. Do you, would you rather be? <laughs> <laughs> would you? Would you rather be white? <laughs> Or 
<laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... it's too old. <laughs> it's, t- it's too. It's too funny. I can't even say it. <laughs> what? <laughs> You look like you're going to explode from trying to suppress your laughter. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, wah, Mike. <laughs> look, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're just both equally stupid. <laughs> Besides, the evil version of Mike is just called Mike. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <laughs> That's all right, then. I get to be the hero of my own adventure. <laughs> any more for any more? No, 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 no more Smash. Yeah, we already had Sonic and Pac-Man and Mega Man and Snake. Jeez. Yeah, who's left as the as the hero of a major gaming franchise who's not... I mean, you could put, like, Lara Croft in it, right? That would be some next level, like, out there. Yeah, but do they need it? No. Pac-Man? Pac-Man's already in it. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Pac-Man is already in it. Yoda? <laughs> okay, you've broken me now. <laughs> what? All right, let's move on before this gets any stupider. Have you played Mario Party? Never. And that looks like a face that says to me, "Never will I play Mario Party." Well, maybe I'm held at gunpoint. No, I. Is it good? I think it's it's probably fun. The early ones, on the later ones, just total bleh. isn't isn't this one you like you all ride on a cart together or something it just i don't know lots of dumb mini games doesn't giant bomb have something where they try and play it through all the mario party games and they just slowly go insane yeah i think there's one guy who who loves it and then everyone's resistant to it it's the game where you could be winning by five stars at the end but then by some weird dice roll you could end up losing so it's basically Mario Kart in board game form. Exactly. Hopefully you'll play it in the meetup. I, I, you know, I think it has been mooted before. You know, let's play Mario Party. And then someone else has said, we don't have four hours. <laughs> We're going to get kicked out before then. You have a few more. I'm very excited for New Super Mario Bros. U. Deluxe. Because I really want to play all of the Wii U Mario games. So... New Soup, which is this one. 3D World, which you own on the Wii U, but I obviously don't have a Wii U, so I haven't played it. But you said it wasn't very good. I only said it wasn't very good because I had been led to believe it was the best 3D Mario game since Mario 64 slash Sunshine, and I didn't think it was that good. But now we've got Odyssey, so whatever. And besides... I'm not comparing it like that anymore. It was just an expectations thing. But it, it's 3D World is, you know, an extension of the 3D Land style of gameplay. So it is what it is. And it's good in its own way, but whatever. And finally, Mario Maker, obviously, since I keep going on about that. So I really want to play New Super Mario Brothers U, but I'm also just fingers crossed hoping they're going to release the other two as well. Other surprising announcements. Katamari. Katamari Damacy. Was it Katamari Damashi? Whatever. The crazy game where you roll everything up. Have you played it? Uh, I, I have played a demo on PS3 or PS4. I don't know which. Oh, okay. I, I think it was PS2 it originally came out on. So I really enjoyed it on the PS2. So I'm actually not sure exactly what this one is. I don't think it's a completely new game. I think it's a remake. Cause it's, Re- re-roll. Yeah, they're calling it Katamari Damacy Rerolled. So I think it's a remake of the first one, which is where the king of all the cosmos goes on this drunken bender, destroys all the stars in the heavens, and then you have to make new stars by rolling things up on your Katamari, and then he throws it into the sky to make a star. How, how does he destroy all the stars? I think it just... He's just, like, really drunk and he's just, like, stumbling around and just breaks them all. Okay. Fine. It's a game ting. It doesn't have to make sense. It's a game where he's, like, this... I-, I can't even describe him. It's just, like, completely insane. And-, and then the sequel to it is, like, Everyone Loves Katamari or something. And it's... They made it because the first game was so unexpectedly popular. And 
literally the plot of the game is that everyone loved Katamari so much or we're making another one and each level is just like answering fan mail like someone has written in and said they'd like a Katamari made out of strawberries like roll up all the strawberries or, you know, it's like completely ridiculous the music in that game is really good as well I remember acquiring and listening to the soundtrack like on repeat for a while it was like my coding music those were the days those were the days Another surprise, Final Fantasy 7, 9, X, and X2. Where's 8, man? No. Where's Final Fantasy 8? Will you get them all? It's just a surprise? Or do you care? Have you played them all? I have played them all. I haven't finished X2. Actually, there's more than just those two, isn't it? There's 12 and Chocobo Mystery Dungeon. I don't know. There's a lot. I was just surprised that there didn't seem to be Final Fantasy 8. I mean, this is where I discovered I just didn't watch the trailer carefully enough and Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII is on there, but I don't think it's on there. The other reason I guess I suspect it's not on there is because did you know that you can't buy Final Fantasy VIII on Steam in Hong Kong? Because? I don't know. You can buy 7 and 9, but you can't buy 8. But I think in the US you can buy 8. I wonder if it's because of music licensing which seems to be the bane of all games at the moment. I mean, that that's why I wonder even for like the PS1 Classic, you know, games that had like licensed soundtracks like Tony Hawk and so on. You know, the problem is they didn't get the music rights like in perpetuity because Final Fantasy VIII actually has like a pop song as like the main theme of the game. It's like this song called Eyes on Me. It's by Fei Wong. So, yeah, I wonder if that's the reason for licensing. It might not be. It might just be because... Nobody liked Final Fantasy VIII except me. It did have a really stupid plot. But then you could probably say that about all of them. <laughs> Finally. Switch Online. Have you got it? No, have you? No. Are you going to get it? Uh, You're buying the family pack, right? I'm going to sign it. <laughs> I was hoping John would do it. <laughs> Okay, so we might get Switch Online. We'll probably get Switch Online if we have a reason to play online. Yeah, there needs to be a reason. If you buy Switch Online later, do you not get all the NES games? Do you only get the ones that you will remember at the time they were added for? That makes no sense. Well, if you think about it, like PSN Plus, you don't retroactively get all the PSN Plus games. You only get the ones that you will remember during the time they were released. So I wonder if it's... Well, I'm just wondering. Everyone's going to miss out on the Core 20, though. Which would make no sense. No, no, maybe you get the Core 20, but like the monthly editions. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I'm just, I'm just speculating wildly with no evidence. There are 20 games here. Yes, at launch there are 20 games. Many of them are sports games. <laughs> yeah, my opinion of the sports games is, oh, why? Why have you stuffed this list with like all this pointless filler? Did anyone really like the NES sport games? The tennis game on the Game Boy was good. Is it, is is this comparable? I don't know. I mean, probably. The tennis one on the Game Boy was actually quite good. But I mean, what is it? Five sports games. We got soccer, tennis, ice hockey, baseball, Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl probably is some beloved game if you're into American football, which obviously we just don't understand because we're not from America. Excite Bike isn't your thing? Well, I didn't include Excite Bike in my list of garbage sports games because I actually thought it was quite good. It's very short, though, I think. But yeah, Excite Bike is cool. I just have the theme tune in my head now, mostly because of the Mario Kart track rather than remembering it from the original Excite Bike. I never owned Excite Bike. So we've just mentioned all the bad ones. <laughs> all the bad ones. They're not, they're not bad, really. I'm just being, like, hyperbolic. They're okay. But they're not ones that I'm particularly excited for. I mean, the ones that I have singled out as being really good are ones I actually have played. So I'm probably not really excited for them either because I've played them before. But there are ones on there that I think are really good. There are some others that either I'm kind of meh on or I haven't played. Like, surprisingly, Ice Climber. Never played it. I actually have no idea what it's like. If it's good or if it's bad. Pro wrestling. Is it going to be a fun fighting game or is it going to be like a meh 
point in the sports game. I've been really disparaging about sports games. They're not that bad, really. I don't know where this has come from. How many buttons does, does this controller have? Two. <laughs> now, you're, now you're being like, I can't have a wrestling game with only two buttons. Where's the complexity? Yeah, this is the NES. You just mash stuff, right? There's Yoshi, which is actually not a fun platform game, but just a really dull puzzle game, as far as I can tell. I never played it at the time, and I've never played it since, so I have no idea, but I don't think it looks terribly good. Balloon Fight. Let's talk about this. Sorry. <laughs> what, what? Let's talk about the good ones. Let's talk about the good ones. Why okay. are we spending so much time talking about the ones we don't care about? Okay, 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 fine. Let's, let's get right onto the, the crux of it, right? There's the obvious ones. Super Mario Brothers. Incredible, seminal piece of gaming. Absolute classic. You've never played it? No. And just gesturing and making strange faces. I mean, you should play it. We should do it as the book club game. It's not very long. Is it very hard? I don't know. I can't be objective about this sort of thing anymore, right? I think if I was to play it, I would find it easy. Because I've played it so much in the past. But, I mean... If we're being really technical, you have played it for like 30 seconds, right, at Retro HK years ago. And you handed the controller to me, and I expected to just breeze through it. And I just died like five times in a row. And I was like, this is not like I remember. So it's quite possible that I'm just bad at games now. Or more accurately, that my muscle memory is just like gone. It must be like literally... 20 years or something ridiculous since I played it. All the Mario games have subtly changed over time. Yeah, that's the thing. All the Mario games physics have subtly changed over time. And, you know, people who play Mario Maker and then go back and play the game that that Mario Maker theme is based on just say, wow, the physics are completely different. I think the Mario Maker physics for all of them are based on New Super Mario Brothers. Whereas the original physics for Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3 and Mario World are actually quite different. Speaking of Super Mario Brothers 3, that is also in this package. And it's another incredible game. Some might say it's the best 2D Mario game ever. I mean, they'd be wrong because they're Super Mario World, but they're close. The Legend of Zelda. Don't know what to say. It's one of the original action RPGs, right? I mean, it spawned the series that has become Breath of the Wild. And then, stepping away from Nintendo titles, Double Dragon, Gradius, Ghosts and Goblins, originally three arcade games, amazing gameplay, ridiculously hard. Because they were quarter munching, you know, they were out to get you. They were out to make sure you died so you had to pay more. But still good fun. And then the last one I've highlighted, River City Ransom. And you were like, what is this game? Yeah. In the UK, it was actually called Street Gangs, which is like the most boring and bland name ever. It is an RPG beat em up, basically. Or it's a beat em up where you, you actually can level up and get, you know, stat points and also learn new skills. So I thought it was really cool. So that's the, the list of 20 launch games. And then as far as we know, they're doing three a month, or at least for the next three months, they're doing three a month. I think Metroid is the highlight or the ones coming. Maybe Ninja Gaiden too, except that I don't know it as Ninja Gaiden because the UK had moral panic about ninjas back in the 90s, it would have been, I guess. 80s, goodness knows. The dim and distant past, times of yore. So not Nair's Open Golf Tournament. It's probably good fun. What is a Warrior's Woods? A Warrior's Woods, I think, was the last NES game ever made. It's a puzzle game. Yeah, it's a weird puzzle game, because, you know, usually puzzle games, you have a little cursor. Yes. In Wario's Woods, I think you control... Is it a little Wario or is it a little Toad? I don't know. You control a little character that's like running around the stack of blocks and you have to like lift things up and put them down and blow stuff up. You can't say Toad anymore. 
<laughs> Toad is trending. Don't look up why. Approaching the drop zone. Locked and loaded. What did you do over the weekend? I played the COD Black Ops 4 Blackout open beta. Actually, I played the closed beta too. I had a key. I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> what? what? When was that? Well, it was last Saturday. When was the closed and when was the non <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it was... Open? The, the difference between the closed and open beta was literally one day. But for some reason... Okay. One of the PUBG squad from New Zealand, no less, was like, Oh, I just got four free keys for the, for the closed beta. Do you want to play it? And we're like, Oh yeah, sure. So he sent over the keys. Did you say that? Okay. Actually, what I said was like, but we're playing PUBG, but everyone else is like, yeah, let's play it. And I was like, I guess I'm overruled. <laughs> so we played it. And yeah, the difference between the closed and open beta was literally one day, which is, kind of pointless but at least we got one extra day out of it it's cod 4 battle royale what can i say there's looting it is literally battle royale so you fly in on a bunch of helicopters you jump out and more than one helicopter there's more than one it's like literally a flotilla of helicopters so i don't know if it just randomly puts you in a helicopter at the start. I mean, you can't see who's in the helicopter with you. It's literally just like, there's a bunch of helicopters. They're flying in a straight line, just like Fortnite and PUBG. You push the F button, because I'm playing on PC, obviously, and you jump out with a wingsuit and you fly wherever you want to fly. Your parachute opens, you land. You have nothing but your fists. Sorry, Ting. No loadout. You have to loot. And then you have to kill each other. That's it. What's the weapon variety like? I'm trying to think. I mean, the, I don't have a good feel for it like I would do in PUBG, right? There seem to be a lot of guns. I, mean, I guess they already had, like, a really strong base to build it on. There's a bunch of 7.62 weapons, a bunch of 5.56 weapons, 9mm SMGs, 45 cal SMGs. Is it 45 cal? Whatever you call it. 0.45 ACP. Sniper rifles. There's a ray gun. There's actually like a pew pew sci-fi ray gun. So weirdly, I think you get traditional supply drops where a plane flies over. I say traditional. I mean like literally like a PUBG supply drop where a box falls out of a plane with a parachute on and you can loot it and you get equipment. But there's also this other weird kind of supply drop where you can see it from a long way away, like this beacon of blue light shooting into the sky. And there'll be like this box with a big question mark on it and around the box are zombies literally zombies that will attack you and if you kill all the zombies the box disappears so you have to like be under threat to be able to loot the box so you you know you need someone else to like be holding the zombies off while you loot the box for example and in the box will be just like wacky weird stuff so like either just good guns but also potentially a ray gun like one time you know we got a ray gun out of this box and it was just like going pew pew and shooting like you know little laser with circly ray wibbly bits on it and it killed people pretty fast but you couldn't get more ammo for it so so no kill streaks no kill streaks you do get equipment and the equipment is quite interesting so the things that would distinguish it from pubg which is like serious business power-ups and equipment i mean i guess the equipment is serious business potentially so the equipment is stuff like a grappling gun which is really cool for mobility you literally can shoot in something it fires like a zip line and it like scoots you along it grenades which are as you'd expect like a you know concussion or a molotov or frag grenade cluster grenade even you get stuff like the RC car, which is not an exploding RC car, but it, it is for recon. So you can like, you can drive it around and you can see what the car sees. There's like a 
sensor darts. You can shoot a dart and it will like show you any enemy players that are in the range of that dart, for example. So there's a whole bunch of equipment like that. That comes from? You, you just find it in the game world in the same way that you would find armor or guns or ammo. You can just find this stuff on the floor and pick it up. And then the other type of item is literally like video game power-ups. So there'll be green boxes and they'll be called stuff like scavenger or outlander or paranoia and stuff. And like they will literally give you like power-ups. Or that, like the perks they have in COD. Yeah, I guess so. So like one of them lets you like move faster. One of them lets you like be in the blue zone and take much less damage if you're outside the zone. One of them lets you see equipment through walls so you can loot much more efficiently. One of them lets you know when someone is targeting you. So I guess like if someone ADSs at you and like is trying to snipe you, you'll get like this alert noise so you can tell when you're being like sniped at. So just literally just power ups. What did you think of that? I mean, I mean, I still prefer PUBG, but I would say that, wouldn't I? So what of the map? I can't tell how big it is, really. I think it's, I mean, it's significantly smaller than PUBG. So I suspect it's actually smaller than even PUBG's smaller map. But it's not all about size. No, it's definitely not all about size. I mean, you can tell from PUBG's smaller map that by making the map smaller, you do get much more action. And, I, you know, I, I literally also think that this is the reason why... Fortnite maybe is more popular and then PUBG people like playing the smaller map because a lot of the time people just want to shoot stuff. Did you play with the vehicles? Yeah, we played the vehicle. The vehicle physics is actually pretty good, interestingly. Well, the the game is much less janky than PUBG, right? Like PUBG physics are a disaster. So if you are driving a vehicle in PUBG and someone is standing on the vehicle they will die. But in this game, we were initially confused. So, you know, there's a, there's like a two-person little quad bike and that has literally two seats. So that one we understood. But there's also like the boats and like pickup trucks. And we were like, how do you sit down in it? But you don't have to. Like someone gets in the driver's seat, the other people just like stand in the back on the truck bed and you can drive around and they don't just die. <laughs> so, like, the vehicle physics work properly, you know, like, or they interact properly with players. So, that was interesting. Oh, there's helicopters. That is an interesting development. And they're quite easy to fly. I mean, I say that. <laughs> the person I play with who we famously say, please never drive again in PUBG we for some reason let him pilot the helicopter. We unsurprisingly all died a fiery death when he decided to land the helicopter by just plowing it into the ground. But they're actually quite easy to control the helicopters. They're not like the battlefield helicopters where they're a, a nightmare. They're literally like easy mode, like push this button to hover, push this button to go down, push this button to go up. Let's not forget the shooting, the pew pew. It's good, I guess. I'm just not used to COD, right? Like, the feel of the game is very different. Your characters move, and they're very weighty when they move. Like, you know, I think people have said that PUBG feels quite floaty, but I guess I'm just used to it. Like, this felt very much the opposite. Like, it's like, clomp, 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 clomp. And the shooting, by contrast... Well, when you shoot in PUBG, you really have to pull down very hard on the mouse. Or you will be shooting at the sky. Like, the recoil is immense. And in this, I was just like, is this a laser beam? Like, I know there are laser beams in this game, but this looks like an SMG to me. It just felt comparatively like there was no recoil. And, again, the bullet drop, I was just like, is there bullet drop in this game? So, well, I'm going to say something controversial. Well, I'm going to say something full of hubris, because, like, it feels like the skill ceiling is lower, right? But at the same time, I died. Like, you know, I died a lot in this game. I was just like, step around the corner, oh, I'm dead. You know, so maybe the time to kill is lower. Actually, the time to kill in PUBG is pretty low as well. Like, I just died so much in embarrassing circumstances. 
So I'm probably not really one to talk. We did come second once. That was our best performance. You stole my last question. <laughs> Sorry, I just preempted it. I was just like, no, we didn't win. So I don't know what happens when you win. It's that because like, we played quite a few of these Battle Royale games now, randomly. Like, we played Fortnite, and, you know, we managed to win a game of Fortnite. We played Realm Royale, we managed to win a game of Realm Royale. Yeah, so we have yet to win a game of Blackout. And I think the beta period's over now, right? So You just have to buy the game. <sighs> yeah, we'll see. I'm obviously kind of hoping that everyone comes back to PUBG. <laughs> no, go back to PUBG! So now, it's... My favourite section slash Ting's least favourite section. I check my laser gun and I go pew pew pew! Rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire news. Rapid fire nonsense. Let's just get this out of the way quickly, in a rapid fire way. So Spider-Man was good after all. You were just completely poo-pooing Spider-Man, right? You were just like, I wonder how it's going to do. I wonder why there's a review embargo. You were like, totally like, Metacritic score of 40. Not right? 40, come on. 60? You, you were definitely not expecting it to be good. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, having said that, the Metacritic score is still 80-something, right, is it? It's 87. 87. That's not that good. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Bonuses are paid after 85, I think. Is it? I don't know. Well, it depends what deal you've got going, but... From the hype you're seeing on the internet, right, from the, the amount people are talking about it, it sounds like it should be like a 90-something, right? Well, there's a lot to be said for fan service. I don't know. Everyone just needs to be raving about it. I saw a beautiful meme... Of, you know, Ratatouille, where like the, the, the critic that's hard to please, you know, like eats the Ratatouille and is like transports him back to the past. And it's literally that picture and it shows him like with Spider-Man 4 and then transporting him back to the past and he's looking at Spider-Man on the, on the PS, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 4, I said it again, Spider-Man on the PS4 and it transports him back to Spider-Man 2. Whatever, whatever. Let, let's move on. Destiny 2. Destiny 2 was the PSN Plus game. I mean, there were other PSN Plus games too, but we finally got Destiny 2. Hold on to your pants for us talking about stuff as if it's new, even though it's a year old. We've all started playing it, but but all separately. Have we actually played together? You played multiplayer, right? Oh, I have. Yeah, I've completely failed to play at the same time as anybody else. I've just gone and played it on my own, but we're all at the same point. For now. For now. Destiny 2. It sounds like Destiny 2 is still like everyone's just everyone's still just complaining about Destiny. No escape. You really want to talk about the Belgian government. I just wanted to get it off my chest. I think we could easily talk about this for longer and do a deeper analysis. And you were like, oh, let's not talk about this now. I want to do a bit more research. I was like, okay, let's put it aside and talk about it another week. And you were like, no, 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 we're just the time will have passed. And I'm like, we're not going to talk about it anyway, then I want to rapid fire it. And thus, here we are. So, the Belgian government has not banned loot boxes, everyone is very keen to point out, but they have said loot boxes are gambling, so they fall under gambling legislation, right? And all I wanted to say was, well, number one, it's not like I'm a fan of loot boxes, I think they're terrible. But I would also point out that why is a loot box different to a collectible card game booster pack? Now, now you're just dragging other people under the bus. Well, no, I, I look, the games industry had a good thing going, right? They were like, oh, we found a way to make more money from our games. And, you know, it's something that people have been doing for years and years and years. It, it's socially acceptable. But then they just beat it to submission. Like, you know, they were just like kept shoving loot boxes in your face in every single way. And they made the managed progression and blah, 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 blah. And so eventually now... Now it's become a problem, right? It was fine for years. Now it's suddenly become a problem because they just did it in an offensively, I don't know, in-your-face way. It's crazy how it's not the mo- mobile games that did us in. It was the... No, it's the... It's not... E- yeah, it's not even the free-to-play games. It's literally the $60 AAA sports games. And then, like, oh, you've paid us a lot of money, but why don't you pay us more money? Is it FIFA? 
this is FIFA's fault, right? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. I don't care. I don't play FIFA. Do your worst, Belgium. It will be interesting to see how it pans out. Because it could be the thin end of the wedge. It could, like... It could be that the rest of Europe follows suit and declares it gambling. I don't know. What's it going to do to Hearthstone? What's it, gonna, care, what's it going to do to Magic the Gathering? I don't yeah. care about Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, like, we both don't care about that. But, like, as a thought experiment. Never mind. We can talk about it properly again if it becomes a big thing. Right? Let's keep it Daily Mail level for now. Kevin. Last one. Yep. I kind of I kind of brought this up very briefly like a week or two ago or a month ago, I don't know how long ago it was. Steam Linux emulation Proton blah. They've made their own version of Wine, right? That's specialized for emulating 3D games efficiently using Vulkan, right? Jeez, this is this is totally Daily Mail level. I've forgotten all the details. I've forgotten literally all of the substance of the story other than, like, the headline. They took our games. They took our games, man. They took our games onto another operating system. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that terrible analogy. Yeah, you can play most games on Linux now, right? In theory. They've got a list of ones that they officially support. And you can also just go and tick a box and say... I know you don't officially support this, but just try it anyway and see if it works. And most of the time it does. So you can pretty much just play most Steam games on Linux now. That's cool. Do you think Steam machines, the Linux Steam machines, are actually going to work after all now? I think it's too little too late. I think so too. Well, I mean, it's not like they ever did a really huge push for them anyway. Maybe they'll try again. I can't be doing with another box in my life. Yeah, but you, you're having all this existential angst right now about what graphics card to upgrade to, right? And, like, is it going to fit in the case? And is the PSU powerful enough? I mean, what if they could just sell you a small box that just could play stuff and it had, like, a 1060 in it? Why do you have that? Have a, have a PlayStation? <laughs> Touche, Ting. Touche. This is my other box for doing work on. I just want to play games on the box I do work on. Okay. Well, that ended with a whimper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being difficult. It's rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, that's the comeback for everything now. It's going to be like, well, that was a disappointment. It's rapid fire. Just deal with it. We were Lost Levels Club. We still are Lost Levels Club. Please rate and subscribe to us on iTunes. Please, please, please. You can find us on email. Mike.and.ting at lostlevels.club. On Twitter. At Lost Levels Club. On Reddit. Slash r slash Lost Levels Club. On YouTube. And Twitch as Lost Levels Club. So, Michael, what are you grateful for today? Uh, I'm grateful. Why the groan? I'm grateful the I'm grateful the week is over. We are recording this on a Friday night and we're we're like so rock and roll we're recording a podcast instead of like you know, let's face it, we're boring and old. I am, but you're not. <laughs> I'm glad it's the end of the week. I'm glad there's a public holiday next week. Which day is it? It's a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah it would be better if it was the Monday, but it's a Tuesday. It cuts the week in two. Yeah, I should have taken the Monday off, but I didn't have the foresight. I don't know. I've just really mentally drained this week we, we've we never actually mentioned it on the podcast but i've actually changed job like i'm actually technically no longer a programmer no one cares about this stop talking about your work <laughs> but but my brain is tired my brain is so tired like you know when you you got a from new powerpoint job, you, you, it's, your brain. It's, it's literally from powerpoint this is this is the sad thing right like you know i used to do something that people i think probably would have considered hard like being a programmer and like writing code and all that I was, like, completely cool with that. Like, I had to just do some PowerPoint this week, right? I had to make, like, a three-slide PowerPoint to just, like, get this idea across. I found it so hard. That's less than a slide a day. Let that sink in, please. It wasn't, like, the mechanical usage of PowerPoint. It was literally, like, 
what am I trying to say here? And like, literally, like my brain was like dribbling out of my ears. I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm trying to say, but I have to say it. I found it shockingly hard. I honestly was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Why am I finding this so difficult? I've lost all command of the English language. I don't know if you're grateful for anything there. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful is done. I'm grateful. I don't have to look at PowerPoint again until Monday. <laughs> this, is a, this is a terrible end. This is a terrible end. I am I am being ludicrous for the sake of it. It's not that bad, really. It's not that bad, really. It's all good. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.